All right, you guys, um, if you haven't already, make sure that you put us in your pocket. Like, if, like go subscribe to right this there. podcast. If you haven't already subscribed to this, what are you doing with your life? If you haven't subscribed to this podcast, you want to yeah. see us every single day. We want to see you every day. We love you. <laughs> we want to see you every single day. We want to see your happy little faces and then put us in your pocket. If you can't watch us every morning, you know, like it's early. We get it. It's early. You got to get your coffee. You got to get boned. We get it. Get boned. And then you can watch us later. You can watch us at lunch. You can watch us mid morning. You can watch us whenever, but just put us in your pocket. Do or that. in your tool belt, whichever you happen well, to have if, on if your person. If you're a dude, you have a tool belt. I'm not trying to like gender you, okay, <laughs> or misgender you, but just put us somewhere, you know? Yes. I don't care. Um, we won't ask questions. Put us somewhere on your person. <laughs> <Don't care. laughs> um, I hate days like this uh, because, you know, there's mm. the world is just borked and it's awful. The news is awful and it's particularly awful today. And so, you know, these kinds of shows when we have to talk about awful things are never as fun as shows where we don't have to talk about awful things or where we can make light at least of awful things. We cannot do that today. Um, and I think that goes without saying. So I couldn't even begin to come up with a nickname today. So you're just going to have to deal with the fact that I'm just mocked today. We are obviously going to talk a lot um, about what happened in Nashville yesterday, but a couple of th uh, quick things first right out of the gate. Interesting polling. We're also going to get to Trump's interview on Hannity last night. There's some interesting polling happening in Iowa and New Hampshire. There are some polls, and again, you know, polls, right? Like, how can we trust them? We really can't. But there are polls that show DeSantis leading Trump in a head-to-head -head matchup in Iowa and tying him um, in New Hampshire. So obviously these are early primary states. That's a big deal because those are the states that generally start to you know, form how the primary is gonna go. So it's interesting, except that when you add in all the other candidates, then Trump is still ahead, right? Which is what we've been talking about for weeks now. If there's gonna be a whole bunch of people in the GOP field, Trump will be the nominee. I mean, I, it, and it can't be more clear than it is from those polls. Right. So some interesting stuff about polling, I guess. If, if you, you like polls. If you like polls. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying so, to steer clear of polls. I'm not really a fan of polls. There is that. Mm -hmm. And then if you are a person who has been following the Murdoch, a murder case, um, obviously Alex Murdoch now in jail for shooting his uh, wife and son. There's another cold case that's been reopened um, that Buster Murdaugh is now potentially involved with the murder of someone. Anyway, that family is awful. It's a South Carolinian family. If you've been following all the documentaries that are on like HBO Max and Netflix and everywhere, then you might have some interest in knowing that the property, the amazing, I forget how many acres it's it was. Do you remember? It's beautiful. I don't remember, but I remember saying to you that you guys should buy it. <laughs> right because it's um, beautiful it's a beautiful property and you're like oh i don't know gosh. if i could do that and your husband's like i'd buy it like i don't <laughs> right. care well i don't right. know i could i'm not it was like a person that could buy a murder house yeah you couldn't buy a murder house really mm -mm. couldn't you go i don't maybe think i could get like a priest to go in there and do an exorcism or something i don't know it's, it's such a beautiful property i mean i would just it like is. clear out all the dog kennels there's i think of all the renovations i could do you know yeah. I just, but it's a, I just, I like land, you guys. I'm a land person. And so I think 1,700 acres, I think. That's right. I think it's 1,700 acres. And it was only like $3 million. Three, well, it was on sale for three and a half million or 3.6 million, I Not think. Not that I and could afford that. it sold for 2.6. So I whoever, mean, there's two buyers and I don't know how that works exactly, but these two buyers got it for a Deal. This is the thing. Listen, not that I have $2 million because I don't, but I'm just saying like the land here is so expensive now because of the Californians that are all coming. I'm just saying we bought our land so cheap, like seven, eight, nine years ago when we bought it. It's like, that's unhurt for that for 1700 acres. And like, some can't. of it's on lakes and it's just, um, it's a I beautiful mean, piece of property. I would be like, I'd gather five friends and just buy it together and just be like, we're just going to buy all that land. And then you <laughs> live on your part of the property and I live on my part of the property. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of land. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Somebody's like, hopefully the buyers are American, right? God. Right. That's, that's a the really, kind of stuff yeah, we got to worry about that's now too. exactly what's happening here in Texas. Anyway, um, I just thought that was an interesting sort of side note that happened yesterday in the midst of everything else happening. So I thought that we would go ahead and mention it. Just like I need to also tell everybody 
I learned something about GenuCell and I thought I knew everything about GenuCell and apparently I didn't. Did you guys know that they have aftershave for men? What? Okay, I'm so glad that you didn't know either. I did, I did not, not know, know that. that. No, because we never talk about their men stuff. I know. Well, and I feel like I we've been leaving men out. And so we've been talking about GenuCell and how, what a good skincare line it is, how, how long we've used it. And I did not even know. I, I knew men can use the whole line, right? Like it's not exclusive right. to women. Right. It does amazing things no matter what gender you are, what kind of skin you have. But I did not know specifically that they had aftershave for men. And so I was like, I got to bring that up because we got men that are watching. Yeah, there and are men that are watching that. that. Mm -hmm. So I, anyway, if you haven't tried GenuCell and you're a dude and you're thinking, well, I kind of would like to try it. There are some rave reviews about the aftershave and what it does for men's skin, how soothing it is. So you might want to check it out, especially because when your significant other, your spouse, your girlfriend, your mom, whoever is buying her subscription to GenuCell, ask them to toss that in. You know what someone's, I mean? Someone's got to get Craig some. He says they're they're the forgotten gender. Someone's got to get Craig some aftershave. See? Somebody get Craig the aftershave right now. Right. It's a right great now. time to buy and to try out a subscription um, package. Their most popular package, 70% off their most popular package. If you subscribe, you're going to get a free beauty box, okay, that's got two items in it, mystery items, and you're going to get free shipping. So it's a great time to try genucell.com slash checks. Think about trying that, you guys. Think about it. Balls. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. I, I, so we have to talk about what happened yesterday. We have to, we have Nashville. to talk about it. I know I don't want to either. I know. Um, and I have videos to share. Unfortunately, the first one is I, I debated, right, about whether or not to even show it. And then I thought, well, I mean, it's everywhere. I guess we might as well show because there's been some question about how this murdering psychopath, this trans weirdo, uh, got access to a locked down school. And now we know the answer because of the surveillance footage of the shooter coming into the school in a side entrance. We do know that this, and there was a lot of confusion yesterday. We should yeah, because it, talk about the name because that's not well, what we do here. Because initially, I mean, for hours, they were saying that it was an unlocked door. Right. And I was like, see this, I was so, I, I was livid about that. Cause I was like, have we learned nothing? You know, this is, I was so mad about it. And then I was freaking out. Cause I'm like, I hope to God, you know, my daughter's school is locked down and that they, I mean, schools need to learn from what happened like in Uvalde that they've got to lock doors. They've got to lock doors. And that is not um, what happened yesterday. No, the door it, was locked. All the, the doors, doors were locked. locked. Mm -hmm. And um, the the shooter, this 28-year-old trans person, and that was another source of confusion, right? Because initially it came out that this was a female, which was mind-blowing. But because the age came out without any other specificity, everyone kind of, there was, everybody on Twitter was like, something is going on. You don't, please don't say an age of someone and so if they know the age, they know who it is. And the fact that they wouldn't release a name or even a gender initially, it, it, everything felt very, very sketch. And it was almost like there was all the speculation that the police, the FBI, whoever, was trying to scrub social media because perhaps this killer did not fit the narrative. That well, they, they, first, they initially fit. said it was a teen. They, right. initially, they initially said this is a teenager. And then they moved on to 28 year old mm -hmm. and then they finally gave us the gender. And then we yeah. were, and then they went back and forth. Then it was the trans thing. And then we couldn't figure out, is it a woman trying to be a man, a man trying to be a woman? And then it was just like, what, what is going on? Yeah. yeah. So ultimately we now know it was a biological female who had recently, I guess within the last year or two, I don't know, um, been living as a man. And so that, and that is super weird, right? Because it's like less than 1% of these kinds of atrocities are committed by, by women. And so that is, is very, very unusual. Um, Shelly, thank you. She says, good news for today. It is my 49th anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. You. That is Best great news. All our chicks family. Yes. That is really, really awesome. Um, so so, so we finally find out that this is a trans person, right? That there was a manifesto that she had written before going, that was found in the car that she had written before that she apparently may have called somebody and said, I'm going to do this. There's all kinds of speculation about that. 
Um, and we don't have all the details on that. But what I am going to show you is the video of how she entered the school. Um, it's very eerie to watch because there's no sound, right? This is just surveillance footage. So you just are seeing her and walking around with this the, this weapon. And it, it's it's horrifying. But I feel like you know, there's some questions about it. People need to see it. And then I'm going to show you three pictures and then we're going to get into the nitty gritty about, about all of this. Okay. So we're going to start with, um, just that footage. So this is the side entrance. And now you can see it doesn't matter that these doors were locked. She just shot through them and kicked through them. And so it's weird, right? It's weird that it's so quiet. Mm -hmm. There And there's obviously different angles. There is no school resource officer at this school. It should be noted. They did not have anybody employed to serve as an SRO. And this is a person we should also note that went to this school. We don't know how long. I don't think they've verified how long, but right. at least, like for a couple of years she went there because mm -hmm. somebody said, I, I read that somebody remembered her being like a fourth grader, like a third or fourth grader. Now, somebody said, how did no one hear that? I think that they did. And you see these, the flashing kind of lights that are happening. I think that's an alarm yeah. that was set off by the door being blasted open. So I don't, I think at this point, the school is aware of what's happening, but you know, it's not like you know what is happening. You know an alarm has been set off. It's it's very difficult to know much else. The amazing thing about this is the the speed with which the police responded. Yeah. This call, the 911 call or whatever this alarm set off was like at 10:13 and this chick was shot dead within like 12 minutes by the police. It was absolutely incredible. Yeah. And they went and they ran to they ran to the danger. They ran to her. Yeah. And thank God they did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, kudos to, to the Nashville police, right? Yeah. And in fact, I want to name them. Um, this was Rex Engelbert and Michael Colazzo, heroes. They totally. didn't hesitate for a second. And what's even more amazing about it is that this chick shot through their police car window. So right when they get there, she was on the second floor. She shot through a window, shot through the window of the cop car they were not deterred, okay? They went running in and they shot her dead. Heroes, yeah. both of them. Yeah. Um, so now we, now, you know, we know the police are ultimately maybe going to share with the public this manifesto and explain what this weirdo was thinking. The, the reports from people that know her are very, very different than what we usually hear, right? We normally hear, oh, this person was a loner and I could see this coming. They were super, super quiet, weird. always super, super quiet. quiet. Yeah, mm -hmm. not the case. Everyone that knew her described her as being funny and sweet and super nice and coming from this good family. I mean, none of the telltale signs were there except that they were trans, right? And so whenever that transition happened, there was clearly some mental shit going on. A, a, there was a switch. There was a there shift. Was a switch. There was a shift in her personality mm -hmm. because you know, you like they talk about like her mom talking about all of her accomplishments and and you know gushing about how wonderful she was like on social media. Now, granted, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. We haven't heard much about her father or anything like that. But but for you know, to Mock's point, she was like more outgoing than what we hear about like a lot of the past people that have done this, a lot of the uh, other monsters who have done this. And so it is really interesting. There was a shift. Absolutely. Clearly. And there's no question that she was mentally ill. I mean, there's just, no, there's just no question about that. Now, whether she had a history of it that was documented, I, that may, she may not have, but the problem is, and I thought um, a guy I follow on um, Twitter, Chad Felix Green put this so well he said, this is not an issue about trans people. It is an escalation of trans activism adopting ever more aggressive and violent tactics of left-wing ideology protected from legal and social consequences while the entire media culture perpetually churns out their trying to kill you rhetoric. 
Right. And that I Bingo. think is so spot on exactly what's happening right now. Yeah. And Tucker, you mentioned that Tucker covered the other night. He did. He Tucker. Trans he, people are taking they're, up they're arms. arming. They're taking up arms. And then, and it's also, it's like they're taking up arms and like people like the M NPR and, and just our culture in general, you know, the left wing culture is telling them it's okay for you to take up arms, but it's not okay for, you know, the, the regular everyday citizen to take up arms. And so it's just interesting to me, like there's a, there's a shift in that part of our co culture too. And then it's, it's this victim mentality. It's kind of yeah. goes back to what you say, where it's like, you're, you as a trans person, you're being victimized. Right. So it's okay for you to feel that way. You're being, it's, it's, it's like a, it's just this falsehood, right? It's this false way of thinking. It's like a, a make-believe that we're, we're putting into these people's heads, or I say we, I'm not doing it, but like the, these left-wingers are putting into these people's heads, like you're being victimized. So you are, it's, it's, it's rationalizing and yeah. it's making them feel as though they're being victimized. Or and worse, then, that they're victims of violence, right? simply because people are misgendering them or they're exactly. not approving of their lifestyle mm -hmm. in the way that they want to be approved of. That's what's really dangerous. It's not even just saying, you know, oh, poor me. I'm get somebody's being mean to me. They're, they're now being told that that meanness equates to violence. To violence. Yeah. Which yeah. that is, that is freaking whack. Yeah. And so then, they believe that they believe they're going to be killed. Right. And mm -hmm. so there's an, there's an account and I'm going to show you this picture. There was a flyer that was sent out about having a trans day of vengeance in DC. You're going to see that picture in just a second. Why did this rewind? I'm not sure why this rewound. My God. Yeah. So right here. Trans day of vengeance. Stop trans genocide. Oh my God. I mean, this is the language that's being used and that's being promoted by the entire activist community so that there is this, this, this hyper it, it, buildup right. of mm -hmm. the sense that they're being attacked violently. That they're going to be wiped not the out. Case at all. That they're going to be killed and wiped out. Like it's, it's somehow. Right. It's, it's unbelievable. And it's not true. And mm -hmm. so this, but this, you can imagine why someone like this psycho chick would be like, oh my gosh, I'm being, I'm going to be the victim of a genocide right. or I'm part of a genocide. So I'm going to take up arms. If anything, so, the complete opposite is true. They've right. been given more rights than most people in society. It's they're like being they've been, coddled to they're, death. Right. Look at Dylan. I mean, it's like, they've been propped up and, and lifted up like, like, like we're not like nobody else is in society. It's unbelievable what's been, I mean, the, it's the left-wing media and celebrity culture and all of those people, they act as if these people are heroes and, and they're celebrated. So, uh, they're absolutely celebrated. Now the account that put out this flyer, you're going to see that, um, next, I think it was called DC rights or something like that on Twitter. I think it was something like DC rights. After this flyer went out, and I don't know that this flyer went out yesterday. I know that this was making the rounds on Twitter yesterday. But the Our Rights DC, I guess, is what it's called. As soon as the shooting happened, they protected all of their tweets. Of so course they did. I thought this was super interesting. Yeah. But it gets even worse because then in Oklahoma, someone photographed uh, this T-shirt that was just unbelievable. This person was wearing this T-shirt yesterday okay and you're gonna see that in just a second um it says trans rights or else and there's a bunch of like ar type weapons pictured so it's okay for them to have guns right i mean guns are okay if it's if they're in the hands of trans people but yet if you're an everyday citizen no guns for you like guns are bad and and you can see with the media yesterday they were already spinning that somehow this individual, this monster yesterday mm -hmm. was somehow the victim. Like they were, I know, listen, it's like, they weren't blatantly saying it out loud, but you could already hear like a little bit of the spin. Oh yeah. Oh, the spin. I the mean, spin. It, they were spinning so hard. Yeah. Like there was already that, well, you know, this horrible, disgusting POS of a monster was somehow the victim in this. Right. I, I was just, I could not believe what I was seeing. On some of well, the other and networks. I've got, yeah, we're going to show some of that too, um, because it is, it's, it, I, it is unbelievable. And what's crazy too, to me is that now 
the media who has been fawning all over and, and being so concerned about dead naming or misgendering people. And they've, they've totally bought into all of the gender identity stuff so hard. And now all of a sudden it doesn't matter. Now all of a sudden they keep calling her a biological female, a female, she, her, they don't care that this killer was living as a dude, identifying as a dude. Now misgendering is fine. Right? So it's just, there, there's so much, hypocrisy and just inconsistency in the media that it is absolutely incredible. So yeah. we're going to get to that media reaction. But before we do that, really excited about a new opportunity for you guys. If you are watching right now and you own a business, okay, if you are a small business owner, and I know so many of you are, I know that because you guys send us gifts from your own stores, right? Mm -hmm. Like you've been so generous about that. And you've sent us things. And I know that a lot of you run small businesses. And so we, uh, we, one of the things that Daisy and I are so proud of more than anything else is the community that we've built. And we couldn't do that obviously without you and without you all coming together and creating that community. And so many of you want to support each other. We know this from our insiders and supporters pages. So many of you want to support each other. And every one of us wants to support conservative businesses, Amen. right? Mm -hmm. So now our VP of sales, genius, okay? And she knows Jennifer, some of you have met her in Tampa. Jen mm -hmm. knows that it can be very expensive to run a full-blown advertising campaign on a podcast like ours. It can be very expensive. And so it put it prices people out. Sometimes it prices small businesses out of being able to advertise. And we know that there are some of you out there who might like to get, to get uh, recognition on our show, right? And to get your get the word out about your business. Well, now there is a way. So we are... Uh, we are kicking off what we're calling the American Business Spotlight. And what this allows you to do is do a four-week advertising campaign um, with our community on our show at very reduced prices. And so this is super exciting for us because we love the chance to be able to spotlight some of our own audience's business. We, it's a super opportunity for you not to just spotlight your business, but also to support the businesses of people who are part of this community. It's like the best thing all the way around, right? So we're really, really excited. We're hoping that if you have a small business, you're going to uh, want to learn more about this. And you can by just sending an email to chicks at radioamerica.com. And then Jen will get you all the information that you could ever hope to know. We'll be talking about that more uh, in the weeks to come, but this is the kickoff. And so we wanted to talk about this neat opportunity right now. Um, I can already I can already think of a few people who would probably be interested in it. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, so excited. I love it too. I think it could be it. so good because it can mm -hmm. really just spur just so much business helping and supporting other conservatives right, right here in our We're own all audience. About all about the small businesses, you guys. American just, small businesses. I Hell yeah. yeah. Yes. Love it. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get to some of this uh, media reaction. W one of the ones that's getting the most attention is of Terry Moran from ABC. Yes. Who was just, well, I, I there's no need to like intro, right? Like he mm -hmm. is the one that's going to, you'll hear him and how ridiculous he is just as soon as this picture goes away. <laughs> And I'm not very good at in inserting picture. Here we go. <laughs> uh, the police chief uh, also said uh, that the shooter has been identified as 28-year-old female Audrey Hale. He said she's a former student of the school and confirmed that Audrey Hale was a identified herself as a transgender person. Uh, it, state of Tennessee earlier this month passed and the governor signed a bill that banned transgender medical care for minors, oh as well as uh, a law that prohibited adult entertainment, including male and female impersonators after a series of drag show controversy. What, what, I, when I heard, I seriously, I heard that yesterday and I was like, what the, what does that have to do with what happened today? Like this guy is a schmuck. Oh my God. Can you even with this? Like what? Oh my I God. I can't. I mean, the, it, the amount of can't. If I can you imagine being a family member of one of those poor babies or of one of those those one of the one of the adults that was killed yesterday that was murdered yesterday and and listening to this garbage listening to that jack off say yeah. that stuff yesterday can you imagine I just 
I wanted to reach through the television and just like, I just was so angry. Yeah. He's a super schmuck. Is what oh he my is. gosh. I, and it's just, it's absolutely vile. So first of all, this, the killer was not a minor. So any legislation that had anything right. to do with preventing minors from being subjected to ridiculous hormones and like having their appendages chopped off, all of that is banned, had nothing to do with this killer and the Nothing. drag queens and the drag stuff. Are right. we gonna, we're really going to talk about the drag stuff right now today. We're going to do that right now. God. Like I just, with this guy and it gets just, worse, like because... quit your job, just quit it. <laughs> it gets worse because then there's also joy Reed. And Michelle, you know, it, this is coming at a time when the first and second amendments are in a real tension, right? It, it, not real tension among the public. I mean, like, eight, it's like an 80 20 issue. Even gun owners overwhelmingly want stronger gun laws. It's just, you know, as Shannon said, the gun lobby and the politicians they own that, that are refusing to let it happen. But you have this in the state of Tennessee, which, you know, ironically is the Scopes monkey trial state, right? Where they used to have a law against teaching evolution in public high schools, in public schools. They now are racing to enact these First Amendment limiting laws to limit things like drag shows. You have rampant book banning. I think Tennessee might be the most aggressive book banning state, even more so than Florida. And so they're essentially saying it's too dangerous to allow children to be exposed to a drag show. A drag queen is, in, is dangerous to children. These books are dangerous to children. But when it comes to guns, they're like, no, put more guns where children are. It is it is an irony that's hard to get away from during this time of moral panic over books, history and drag shows. And I fear that the identity of the murderer here is only going to reinforce that. I mean, this is, you know, oh my God. I, I can't. I mean, it's, it's so it became like a bashing segment against Tennessee. That's that's basically what I heard a lot of there. It's like Tennessee, it, your skirt was too short. <clears throat> right. That's essentially what they're doing. Exactly. That's what it was. Yeah. It's like Tennessee is just a, a bunch of hilljacks, you know, who they're just a bunch of rednecks out there. It's this is what, you know, she believes. I wonder if she spent any time there at all. I mean, I just God, these people are. Well, just and it's like, you know, anytime it's a cis white male. It's somehow, regardless, it's the right's fault, right? Mm -hmm. oh, and totally. then in this case, when it is clearly like a trans weirdo, it's also the right's fault because right. of our policies. So it's either our fault because of guns or it's our fault because of policies. And it's never the fault of the psychopaths that are actually committing the crimes. Yeah. I, it's just infuriating. And then you informed me that this next person that is going to be talking to Joy Reid is Shannon Watts. Well, I didn't that even was recognize the, her. the last clip. It was sh that was Shannon Watts there. And that the clip that you just played is her as Shannon Watts. She just didn't say anything. She but was she's just about sitting to. there. She's about to say something in this one. Yeah. Shannon Watts, who you should you should know from like, is it what's what's the organization that she's with? Is it it's Mom's Demand? Mom's Demand. It's Mom's Demand. Yeah. And she's the one that got a bunch of money from, I mean, I, I shouldn't say money, but she got a bunch of security from Bloomberg, remember? Yeah, that's right. It's that's like right. she she always had guns surrounding her when she would do, you know, I guess public speaking engagements because guns are fine for people like that, but she just doesn't want anybody else to have guns. She's one of those broads. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that this is her on the left talking. I don't know why this keeps rewinding. Hang on. That's trial right. state, right? Where they used to have here. a law against teaching evolution. They're like, no, put more guns where children are. It is, it is an irony that be their answer. And okay, here we go. I fear that the identity of the murderer here is only going to reinforce that. I mean, this is, you know, that would not be their answer. And look, they don't seem to say anything about the huge spike. Um, in, in homicides among trans people in this country, up over 90% in the last few years. Most of that carried out with guns. There have been hundreds and hundreds of mass shooting in the last few years alone, most of them, as you said, by uh, straight white men. And so this is a, a moral panic. They want to focus on everything but the real issue, which is uh, easy access to guns in this country. Uh, I'm the parent of a trans kid. I can tell you that I'm terrified right now. And it isn't just easy access to guns, but it is these lawmakers who are essentially putting targets on these kids' backs. Wow. Does it shock you that she has a trans kid? Not at all. Not it's even a, a little I bit. Bet, I bet every single one of her kids is trans. <laughs> I 
to every single one. Every however single many one. she has. <laughs> she probably has four kids and they're all trans. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, it is just the the interesting thing about how she phrased that too. She said, no one wants to talk about the real issue. They don't. The real issue is exactly what Chad Felix Green said it was about this activist sect of the trans community right. that are mentally ruining people. And these people are becoming activists and becoming violent because of what they are being told. Right. And the media is all too happy to go along with it. Yeah, yeah. there's genocide being committed against you. Yeah. No, there's not. And, we and, just don't want kids to be having to be subjected to drag shows. That's not genocide, okay? That's just good parenting. Exactly. Yeah. And and there is no talk. There was absolutely zero talk yesterday about mental illness, except for on Fox. Right. You know, I mean, there's there never is. It's like, you know, I had a family member write me yesterday and it, it was the whole, oh my God, you know, when is this going to stop? When is this going to stop? Well, it's, it's probably going to stop when we talk about the, act, the, the, the absolute culture rot that we're experiencing in this country. It is, yeah. it is not just a one pronged problem. You know, it's a, we have, there are many prongs to this problem. You're, we're just seeing like a couple of them play out yesterday. We are watching just the rotting of our country. It's just a total rot that's we're just that we're just experiencing it right now. I mean, I, I hate that, but it's it's mental illness is rampant in our country. Yeah, I mean, it's just getting if, worse. You can you can talk about the guns, and of course, they go straight to the guns, and this always. is a trans transgender issue, obviously, too. But they always go straight to the guns. But I mean, we we've talked about this before. I remember my God, like guys at my high school would come to school with guns in the back of their trucks. Guns were, were there. There were there, guns have been around for a very long time. There's guns mm -hmm. will always be around. You're never going to get rid of the guns. And I mean, we never had this problem when I was in high school. We never had this problem when I was in school. I just, this is a people problem. It right. is a, you cannot legislate evil. You cannot do it. And yesterday I got to the point where I was like, fine, pass all the laws. Pass them all. Go ahead and like ban all the guns. I promise you this problem will not go away. It's just not going to go away. People are still going to be completely mental. They're still going to do these things. You can pass all the laws you want to pass and it's not going to, it's just like a, a tiny little bandaid for a, yeah. a, a bleeding out problem that we cannot solve by putting a bandaid on it. But I mean, if they want to do it, if Democrats want to do that, do it. Go ahead. It is a heart problem. It's a it's a heart problem and it's a mind problem. And we're not talking about that. And this, we're yeah. not getting to the root of the problem, which is, my God, I mean, kids are a mess in this country. Thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie says the trans population has exploded. So, duh, the number of those sadly injured will rise, too. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know what's interesting? I mean, just like you said, guns have been around. Thank you, MDCT. Thank you. Everything woke turns to hate. Oh, shoot, hate. Turns yes. to hate. It's interesting because you were saying how guns have been around forever. You know, this was part of it, it, we we grew up with people who brought them to school, just like right. you said, and it's never been an issue. And I would even say that there have always been trans people. Right. That has never been an issue until this culture started celebrating the mental psycho, right? Until they started saying, oh, well, we're going to, now it's no longer gender dysphoria that we need to treat as a mental condition. Now we need to celebrate your psycho. We need to approve of and celebrate it and then convince you that the it. world hates you mm -hmm. and then get you all angry and afraid and then and increase your mental like psychoness yeah. Which tenfold. Which basically plays into the whole, you know, victim culture. Yeah. I mean, this, this generation is the generation of victims. I mean, it's like, it's, if it's not, if you're not a victim for being trans, you're a victim for your race. You know, you're a victim for something. Everybody's a victim. Everybody's, Everybody's a victim. Right. Gosh. Mm -hmm. So yesterday, um, Joe Biden was scheduled to speak at some sort of something. It doesn't matter what, it never matters what. And Fox got the news. Obviously, they got the news of uh, the shooting taking place, but they also got word from ostensibly Joe Biden's team that as soon as he took the stage, he was going to address the shooting. So they immediately cut to him as soon as they heard he was ready to take the stage. Oh my God. And it was awful. So cringe, you guys. The, f the way that he, it's not that it wasn't a somber enough tone. It's that 
it's as if he didn't know. And he did know because he ultimately did address the fact that Republicans aren't doing anything about guns. But this is the tone that he took immediately when taking the stage. And you'll hear as soon as Fox breaks away from it because they were so horrified, you're going to hear their reaction to what you're about to hear. My name is Joe Biden. Oh my God. I'm Dr. Joe Biden's husband. <laughs> and I ate Jenny's ice cream, chocolate chip. I just cannot. I came down because I heard there was chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> By the way, I have a whole refrigerator full upstairs. <laughs> I think I'm kidding. I'm not. God. Ben, how are you, pal? One of the best guys in the United States Congress, Ben Cardin. <laughs> Folks, uh, it's a delight to have you all here. And who are those good-looking kids back there? Oh, my God. <laughs> They're your kids, all four of them? Yes. Well, stand up, guys. I can't. John, we'll jump back in here. Um, yeah. As uh, considering uh, the moment. It was Sandra. Uh, we, it was. we were a told that the shooting yeah. that just happened uh, left three children dead, mm -hmm. uh, three adults dead, shooters dead, and we were told he would be addressing this f off the top. Yeah, it's uh, rather surprising. I thought that a somber President Biden would have come to the podium here and addressed the school shooting. Yeah, I was watching that live yesterday, and I was like, "What the hell is happening?" Like he was acting like he was, you know, Johnny Carson at a variety show. Yeah. What is it? What an idiot this guy is. Oh my is. God. Total idiot. He is a complete disgrace. Complete embarrassment. Oh my God. And then um, he, and he, he barely addressed any of that, right? Except to basically say it's a gun thing. Um, but he did have a couple other moments. Like he had a weird moment where he did the whisper thing again. And then, uh, so you're going to see that. And then you're going to see how he closed, which is even weirder than mm -hmm. this whole opening. Check this out. And by the way, I'm now I'm supposed to I'm I'm known as America's most pro labor senator. Well, guess what? And then what? as now as president, well, guess what? They're in fact increasing the number of women are in labor unions. It's got to be. Oh no, you think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. Oh my God. Women. Oh my God. No one ever thinks you're kidding, Joe Biden. <laughs> Stop saying that. You sound like an idiot. God. And, and then and so yeah, he pushed the whole assault weapons ban. That's right. all he said. He said something about the assault weapons ban, and then this, and then he did that. I just and then this is how it ended, you guys. So this is how he decided to close out his appearance. And play. I'm Dr. Joe Biden's ah, husband. Jeez, it rewound again. And by the way, I'm now I'm supposed to. I'm I'm known as America's most pro labor center. Sorry, you guys. Let me get it to the right place. Go. Here we go. But I hope you have a good conference here, and I hope you have a good round table. And uh, there's a little thing going on in, around the world. Anyway, I'm, uh, thank you so very much. There's a little thing going on, and I go, uh, is what he said. Oh, my God, that guy. That's our president. So... Yeah. That all happened, um, mm -hmm. and it's just horrifying. And then, of course, his ridiculous, idiotic, diversity hire press secretary immediately runs to the podium so that she can blame all of this on Republicans. She reads. No, the President Biden has taken more action than any president in history on gun safety, from nearly two dozens, two dozen actions, including the executive order he just signed last hard to month, read. or this this month. Apart. Pardon me, mm. to the bipartisan, bipartisan Safer Communities Act legislation he signed into law after the tragedies in Uvalde and Buffalo. He also believes it's not enough. We must do more. And he wants Congress to act because enough is enough. In his State of the Union, the President called on Congress to do something to stop the epidemic of gun violence tearing families apart, tearing communities apart. How many more children have, have to be murdered before Republicans in Congress will step up and act to pass the assault weapons ban? As you Reading is hard. Reading is really hard. 
Yeah, two dozens. Enough. It's two dozens, you guys. Reading is really hard. She's an <sighs> idiot. And this so uh, they, industry, they're just embarrassing. Right. Embarrassing. They're totally embarrassing. So they sent her out there to do what he should have done. Her, they pick her. I mean, she can't even, she can't even read a script. God. It's yeah. just, ugh. anyway. Um, so, all right, we're going to move on because that's Please. just, I can't talk about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Donald Trump appeared in an interview with Hannity last night. Um, I will say that I watched a good bit of it. Um, and I was enraged by much of what he said. He was, I don't know how people don't see how self-interested he is. I know people are like, he cares about America. He cares about us so much. Okay. Maybe that's true. But the reason that he does anything, the reason that he acts in any kind of way is only in response to people who he believes like him. And so, and you'll hear it a lot, like, oh, I supported this guy because he really, he defended me or he said this about me or he was nice to me. It's always about how does somebody make you feel? And then, okay, I'm going to be nice to you. He said ridiculous things about DeSantis, ridiculous. And I was absolutely enraged by much of the interview, but because I love you guys and I know how much you guys love him, a lot of you, I took, I pulled two clips from the interview to share with you where he is being the Trump that I love. Okay. So I tried to look past all the other bullshit that yeah, I hate about him. And caveat, she watched it and I had it on last night, but I wasn't really watching. It was background noise and I was doing other work. Um, but she watched the whole interview, which I couldn't believe that you did. Well, and but, so much of it just irritated me. Um, yeah. but there, when they talked about Ukraine, um, I, there, I was like, okay, that's, that is, thank you, Donald Trump for reminding me about the things about you that were really, really fantastic. Now there's two clips. The first clip he's, he's being very, he's like overly Trumpy because he's basically saying I could solve the entire Ukraine, Russia crisis in 24 hours. And I don't know, maybe he could. Okay. I'm not going to put it past him, but again, there's the, the ego part of him that kind of makes me crazy. But when he talks about how he got the rest of the Western world to pony up to pay their fair share in NATO. That's what that's I was true. like. And that's true. He did that. That yeah. was some good stuff. So yeah, that's what I pulled for you because I knew you guys would get so mad if I, if I showed the, the mean stuff, Jill Smith. Thank you. If I type what I'm thinking, I would be in jail for life. I hear you. Um, all right. So here are those two Trump clips back to back. This thing isn't solved by the time we have the election, which is possible it won't be. And there's also possible we'll be in World War III with these idiots that are doing what they're doing. You could end up in a nuclear world war, which will make World War I and World War II look like patty cakes, okay? Uh, this unbelievable, because we have people that don't know what they're doing. But if it's not solved, I will have it solved in 24 hours with Zelensky and with Putin. And there's a very easy negotiation to take place, but I don't want to tell you what it is because then I can't use that negotiation. It'll never work. But there's a very easy negotiation to take place. I will have it solved within one day, a peace between them. Now, Western, Western Europe is not doing their fair share. What's unfair, and you and I have had this conversation, is that we are spending, we're up to almost $150 billion dollars. And Europe's at $24 billion. Now, it's the same thing with NATO. Don't forget, I got the, them to put up hundreds of billions of dollars. My first meeting at NATO, you know, I was just there, never did this before. I'm sitting with all these presidents and prime ministers, nice guys, 28 countries. And I'm looking at the charts. I say, could I see who's delinquent because they're supposed to pay? And they say, what do you mean by delinquent? They said, that's a real estate term. When you don't pay your rent, you're delinquent. Could I please see... Uh, who has not paid and of the 28 countries 20 were not paid they weren't paying mm -hmm. and I said you have to pay and if you don't pay I'm not going to protect you and the head of a very important country stood up and said who is delinquent said could I ask you if we don't what you're saying if Russia attacks us and we aren't paid up you're not going to protect us I said that's exactly what I mean <laughs> I mean I totally agree with them on that I know, right? Like this you're a freaking is, this is deadbeat. The that I love. <laughs> yeah, I love that too because you're a freaking deadbeat. Pay your pay your fair share. Right. I'm sick of paying for all these people. <laughs> 
That so, is the part yeah. of Trump that I so yeah, me appreciate. Too. The, me the too. rest of the too. interview, unfortunately, he sounded very aggrieved and whiny and angry and just bitter. And I hated it. But that part, yeah. that part, I was like, well, that's what I'm going to share with us. And, I, and I agree with that, too, because nobody like I mean, I say nobody. I don't like to hear men speak like that. I don't like to hear men, you know, strong men sound aggrieved and, and whiny. Yeah. Like quit, quit bitching and just like be strong and go in there and, and say the stuff like what you're talking about with paying your fair share and like go in there and be strong. Right. Quit bitch, quit bitching about what happened four years ago or two years ago or a year ago. And just talk about now, talk about the here and now that's what I like to hear. So, yeah. and I think a lot of people feel that way too. And it's not like, a, I'm not, I know people are going to be like, stop bashing Trump. It's not a, it's not bashing. It's like, that's just anybody. I don't like mm -hmm. to hear any man. I, I'd say that about my husband, you know, and I love him. So <laughs> it's like, you know, just don't quit. Just be a man. Yeah. Be a man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and stop living in the past and stop right. nitpicking at your opponents and just go and be that, yeah. be that guy that we just showed. Cause that's what everybody, that's totally. what could actually gain supporters, right? He's not going to gain a single person by saying that if it weren't for him, DeSantis would be working in a pizza parlor. Right. That's not going to get him any new supporters. Like Laura said, don't, I love that. His, she says, her son says, don't talk about it. Be about it. I freaking I love, love that. that. Yeah. And that that's exactly. Awesome. And that is like, that's, I love that. It's a man thing. I love men who are like that. And that's mm -hmm. what, that's what a, a strong man should be. Just I do love that, that too. Mm -hmm. Valkyria Winter. Thank you so much. She says, hate him or love him. The U S needs Trump or someone like him. The U S needs to back its balls back needs to get its balls back. get its balls back yeah I, I i that i completely agree with that statement they need him or someone like him someone with balls <laughs> mm -hmm. uh okay and there is someone who does have balls i will say who um is considering a run we mentioned this yesterday chris christie is planning to announce within the next 60 days, whether or not he plans to run for president. He was in a town hall yesterday and it sure sounded like he wanted to get into this race. Now, back in the days when he was fighting the school unions, school unions in New Jersey, I had a mad crush on him. Oh man. So many people did, right? He was the yeah. Trump of the day way mm -hmm. back when, when he was fighting the school unions. I remember you had to, you went to a state dinner and I couldn't go because I had the stomach flu. Yeah. And you went and gave him like all the hugs and everything. I remember because he came to Indiana. I do it. Cause, and that was when you just like, oh my, oh God, my God, you just I loved him. I wanted him and Mitch Daniels to be co-presidents. Mm -hmm. Remember I was like on this huge kick for a while. Anyway. Yeah. He was amazing back in the day. Obviously, we know what's happened to him over the years. It's not he's been less amazing. And he absolutely destroyed the presidential aspirations of Marco Rubio. We all remember the moment that it happened on the debate stage. Well, he apparently is very, very proud of that and is saying that that is what needs to happen to Trump. And who do you think he thinks is the best person to make it happen? <laughs> <laughs> be him. He right. thinks he's the guy to do that. I find that so interesting. Like right? The, like the ego on some of these people and him. It's off the charts. Especially. It is so off the charts. It's so so here he is talking about that very thing. Check it out. Let me tell you something. You better have somebody on that stage who can do to him what I did to Marco. So funny. Because that's the only thing that's going to defeat Donald Trump. And that means you gotta have the skill to do it. And that means you have to be fearless. It's so funny. Because he will come back and right at you. And so you need to think about who's got the skill to do that and who's got the guts to do it. Because it's not gonna end nicely, no matter what. His end <laughs> will not be a calm and quiet conclusion. And so, you know, my great memories from here were, were about doing this. We did over 100 town hall meetings in New Hampshire when I ran, and I loved all of them. They were all really interesting. And so if I run again, I can't imagine that I wouldn't continue to do it the same way, because I think it's the best way to communicate. And this state has the people who will actually be willing to show up and engage and ask the questions that need to be asked of everybody. 
But this time, if I run, I would just hope that you'd come to a better conclusion than you did the last time. <laughs> Okay, so that'll be New Jersey versus New York. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and then I have I have a question. Didn't he have gastric bypass? Okay. What's that face? This is you're just, so it didn't work. Is that what you're saying? It didn't work. Right is that what your face is saying? It just didn't work. How does that not work? How I don't know, not, man. How does just, that not? Well, you know how stomachs are. They expand. Right? They, okay, like, this so, is what they're good at. Is all expanding. Right. His just what his just said. Ah, we're not gonna. That's not gonna work. Just not <laughs> nice gonna, try. Nice. It's just <laughs> nope. Okay. All right. Um, there's an interesting theory that Steve Forbes floated about the election, and I have not heard this take before. So I'm gonna share it with you guys, and then we can see what you think. I'll predict right now, Biden will not be on the ticket in 2024. Well, OK, we've got to investigate that one. What makes you say that Biden will not be on the ticket in 2024? Well, in addition to his other troubles, the economy is going to be going the wrong way. And Democrats are going to suddenly realize this guy's taking the blame and he can drag us down. Remember, a lot of senators, Democrat senators, are coming up for re-election in 2024. Right. So uh, he's going to say, I did my part. Economy's great. I'm going to retire to Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> nice idea. Yeah, the plane is crashing. The plane is like literally, on the, it's taking a nosedive and it's crashing. So, by the way, that guy creeps me out. Forbes does. For, he's a little, yeah, he's a little. God, creepy. he creeps, he gives me the willies, you guys. A little bit I just, oh, God. <laughs> totally creeps me out. But yeah, it, it, I mean, this plane is crashing. And I, like, he can't run. He just can't. And if, and if he runs, I mean, it's just going to be a complete joke. You know that most of the Democrats out there are like, that guy sucks. We just can't say it out loud. He sucks so hard. I mean, look at everything. Every day we have an example of how much he sucks. Yeah. And how awful he is and what a disgrace he is and how embarrassing he is and how he's like, visiting <laughs> angels, America's <laughs> choice in home care. care. Where's my pudding, Jill? Where's my pudding? <laughs> he's terrible. You think I'm kidding? <laughs> so terrible. I mean, he can't run. He's completely senile. But do you think he will? Or like, what do you think no, about what's... They're going to find a way. There's always people behind the scenes. Obama's running the show, right? I mean, he's like behind the scenes running the show. There's like footage of him talking about how he wanted to do that. And so he's totally like pulling the strings right now. They're, I'm sure they're going to find some other puppet that he'll, you know, pull the strings for. And it's not going to be Joe. What a, what a nightmare he's been. Oh, my gosh. Well, there's years. no question about that. But like. Who's do it going to be? Think he'll step away, and because obviously, how does he do that without saying here, like Kamala? A, they'll come up go. with some sort of health problem or something. He'll get some sort of something. They'll figure something out where they'll just give him a, a clean exit. Oh they'll give him something. God. I just wonder who it's going to be. Yeah, I just, some people because are saying he'll bow, he'll bow out at the last minute. He'll, but I think so too, Suzanne. I think it's going to. They have to. He cannot but it run can't again. Be at the last minute because. Other candidates need time to get organized with a campaign. I'm sure they're already organizing people. You know how politics is. There's probably so much crap going on behind the scenes right now. There are probably a couple other people that they're grooming or there's somebody that they're grooming. I just don't know who it is because it can't be Kamala because she's just as equal as an idiot. She's a, a moron. Well, He's it's a colossal you know, Gavin, Kamala, Pete. Those are the ones that are always named that are. It's got to be. It's maybe Gavin. Oh, God. He's so greasy. So oh. greasy. So maybe Gavin or, I mean, Pete is an idiot, too. He's like 12 years old. They just have so. The, the people on their bench are are just awful. And so if we don't win this election, it's our fault. I it's, know. It's completely our fault. And I blame us entirely. And shame on us if we don't win this election. I'm For saying real. that. And I stand by that 100%. It's totally our fault we suck <laughs> if we don't win this election. Because we are up against morons. Morons and old people. Yeah. It's absolutely right. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me... I'm about to, <laughs> about to play you a clip from Megyn Kelly's show in which she hates and is mad at everybody. So if you think you're going to come off getting away from Megyn Kelly's ire, you're not. If you're a Trump supporter, you're a target. If you're a DeSantis supporter, you're a target. If you are DeSantis, you're a target. She is mad at him because he will not go on her show. 
Now, I don't know if he just isn't responding to her yet because obviously we've tried to get him. Well, you right? know what? He's I'm not... mad at him too. I'm mad I at know. him for not coming on our show. But she thinks that he's avoiding her specifically because he's afraid. And I don't know if that's true. I have no idea why it is that he's not agreed to be on her show. She says it's because he's afraid of how tough of an interview she would be. And maybe that's true. I don't know. I think but he's afraid of us because he's afraid that you're going to like do something to him that's going <laughs> to get him in trouble because you're a stalker. <laughs> so, seriously, he's going to need a restraining order. She, well, you know how you. much I love Megan when she gets mad. And even though she's mad at him, even though she's mad at his supporters, even, she's mad at everybody in yeah. this. She's mad. And I like it when she's mad because I just, she's got such fire. So I wanted to share this. Brace yourselves. I, I will say for the record, we asked DeSantis to come on the show. He has not said yes. And I find that very interesting. You know, I love Piers Morgan. He's a pal of mine. But why would you go sit with the British guy and not come on the show? And I, I do think there's a reason for it. And I will venture to say he's afraid. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. He's afraid because he knows the kind of interview that I would give him. He's not going to get a pass. Same as Trump never got a pass from me. None of these guys get a pass. Speaking of Marianne, Marianne Williamson, go back and look at the interview I did with her. She also didn't get a pass. <laughs> she we, we, we led to the infamous line of, this is an interview, not a friendship, which is what I, what I had to remind her of when she got upset. I was actually asking her tough questions. That's the way... I am with presidential candidates, and that's because I represent the viewers, not the candidates. You know, and that's the way the journalists should be. We're there for the viewers. We're not there to rub elbows with these guys who may or may not be president and and ignore ourselves and their good graces. The reporters need to remember that. The relationship is supposed to be adversarial. For the love of God, these journalists should show it. I don't give a shit if you've fallen in love with DeSantis or Trump, for that matter. They're not your friend. Your friend is your audience, is the truth. That's the only thing you're out there to cover. And I, it disgusts me to see the press running cover for Biden, to see the hardcore MAGA group running cover for Trump all the time, to see the now the new, the, the, the new right in love with DeSantis and running. Like, just stop it. Stop it. Stop falling in love with the politicians. You're a member of the media. Grow a pair. Your business is not to be loved. It's to tell the truth. Respect is what you want. Respect will get you an audience. Love is for pundits who just want to say the nice, sweet nothings that people want to hear. The whole thing is bass backwards. It upsets me. <laughs> I love her. Which she's totally, love she's absolutely right. Right. Which is why I will continue to say anything I want to say about Trump and or whoever else and irrespective of how mad people get. I'm just going to say what I want to say. Yeah, but people would say if you interviewed DeSantis, you would be fawning all over him. And you would. I would I have to. Totally fawn. I do. I, I would have, I'm crazy about him. I know. And I'd have to run. I'd have to say I'd have to ask hard questions to him. Because well, I, it's not like I won't ask hard questions, but I'll probably like all of his answers. <laughs> oh, my God. You would be like, you'd be starry-eyed the whole time. I'd have to ask the hard questions. I'd have to be mean. To, I'm pissed off at him anyway because he's totally ignored us. Well, that's true. I get really but, pissed. I but get pissed we are not him. journalists either. So we are not. I, I'm true. not a journalist. I'm not we're, in that business. Right. And so we're not. I want to have him on the show because I think he's great. Right. Just, and you know what I mean? I, so that's not my job. But I look. At, but I got to tell you, I look at DeSantis and he, he at this point, it's like no one puts baby in a corner. He's totally put us in a corner, you guys. So I'm already pissed <laughs> off at him. So if we interviewed him at this point, I'd be already irritated with him. I'm just yeah. putting that out there. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't I'm, think he's coming on our show. I wonder if if Nikki um, Haley has been on her show. If, if she's. Oh, yeah. Nikki. I'm, yeah, she has. OK, well, good for her. So she's the one who goes balls. on all the shows. See, well, at least Nikki has a set and she'll go on her show, whereas some of these guys who apparently have balls won't go on the show. So for people who are dissing Nikki Haley, at least she has a set and she'll like ante up and go. So there's that. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. I'm not in Nikki's camp. I'm just saying, you know, a lot of people are like, I don't like Nikki. Well, at least she'll do interviews. I mean, it's true. She does all the things. I mean, God. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Um, okay. One more clip before we get to your whack. And that is, uh, this is related to this whole trans celebrating trans culture phenomenon that is like overtaking our whole culture, right? The, this is crazy. So Dylan Mulvaney, who's like probably the most famous trans person at this point beyond Caitlyn Jenner, I guess. Um, now in, in addition to, you know, getting invites to the white house, in addition to, getting all the sponsorships and all the endorsements and all the, like a tampon sponsorship or no, whatever. I mean, all this ridiculous stuff. In addition to all the celebrating, um, she, he, whatever, 
is now being asked to speak to college students. You guys, look at this ridiculousness. Hi, it's day 374 of being a woman. You still and look like a man. Second, since we last talked, I think I needed a few days to process the past year since day 365. But I'm back. I'm back, baby. And we need a proper catch up. But in the meantime, you had to see the outfit. I mean, and you might be thinking, Dylan, why do you look so professional? And it's because I have my first speaking engagement out of college today. I'm at the University of Pittsburgh and I was only in college just a few years ago. And I was very lost then, a little boy crazy. And, but I finished, I got my degree and now look at me. And I don't know exactly what I have to teach these college students, but we're gonna have a good time. I can guarantee that. Just call me Professor, Professor Dylan. Call me Professor Dylan. And, okay, is that it? Um, yes, okay, I gotta go. Okay, class dismissed. Love you. I didn't catch the, the university. The Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, what? <sighs> we're, there's a lot of wisdom to impart, obviously. <laughs> right, right. I am, um, you know, we're doomed. We're doomed, you guys. I <laughs> just, we're doomed. This is what <laughs> universities are doing now. Like, seriously, somebody who's been asleep for like, you know, 50, 60 years, they've been in a coma and then they wake up and then they see this shit. They wake up, they they see this and they're like, just I just want to go. Can you put me <laughs> back in the coma? Can right. you just put me right back? Because what is going on? What's happening? Right. Because I, I mean, this is, yeah, I mean, this is the thing. And people wonder why kids get out of college and they're dumb. They're dumber than when they went in. Mm hmm. Because of crap like this. And it's an interesting juxtaposition, right? So for us to ha have spent so much time talking about what happened in Nashville and this idea that trans people are facing genocide. Right. At the same time, people like Dylan are celebrated and fawned over and worshipped and, and given millions made millions of dollars. That, I, that I individual. Mean, yeah, how, it, how are we squaring what's happening? Yeah, you know what I mean? It, it's a bunch of bull crap. I mean, that, that person is a gajillionaire now, a gajillionaire. Yeah. It's yeah. just Anth weird. It's Anthony just weird. said, I, Anthony said, I miss America. I do too. I yeah. do too. Yeah, I really do too. It's it and, to be a lot you know, easier. And it used to be that, you know, cause we would have like, even what, a couple years ago, we would have like a transgender, a conservative transgender on our show. And there was a sense of like, like tolerance. And I'd be like, okay, I mean, that's cool. They're, they're conservative transgenders. Now I'm just like, get it out of my face. <laughs> I just, cause I'm over it. It's like, it's, it, it's oversaturation. Like mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm over it. I don't, I, now I just don't, it's, it's so much of it isn't real. So much of it is a social right. contagion. Exactly. Mom. Yeah. It's a social contagion where it's just like, now I think a lot of people are doing it because they are so they're so revered and so lifted up and so celebrated in culture. It's the antithesis of what, you know, they're saying that they are, they're being right. demonized. They're not being demonized. They're being celebrated in culture where a lot of these young kids are like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm considered brave. I'm considered stunning and brave. I'm brave. If I do this, well, of course I'm going to do it. And so they do it based on that. They don't do it because they're actually transgender. They do it because they get celebrated for it. So of course they're going to do it. These are young people. It's like back in the day when we used to tell kids, you're brave. If you're a soldier, well, they're going to go be a soldier, right? <laughs> and they're going to go, you know what I mean? We don't tell kids that, that soldiers are brave anymore. We tell kids that transgenders are brave. Right. And so what do you think they're going to do? Well, if, the ones that are troubled, absolutely, are. they are so pr prone to falling into those traps. You know what I mean? Exactly. They're the perfect targets for it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the whole culture is completely borked. We're so borked. So borked. All right. Do you want to, um, how do you want to do your whack? Because I well, know there's I, a video. Well, I feel like everybody needs to check their attic. Okay. I feel again with it. This is more of a PSA. Again, I've been giving you guys a lot of PSAs in my wax, but it, it's kind of whack. This is, now this is in Seattle. Um, I don't know if this is just something that happens in Seattle. I saw this and I thought this is so freaking weird. I mean, we have an attic. Yeah. You, have, you have an attic. Most mm -hmm. people have attics. Um, th this happened to this guy and for three days he didn't realize that this was happening, but um, All right, I'll just play the video. Play so the video. Can hear the context. Freaking weird, you guys. You can see that, right? Okay, yeah. 
All right. Yeah, you may want to expand it. When Davis Wallman got to his Green Lake home, he noticed some lights on. I don't immediately freak out, but I'm like, this is not ordinary. He didn't think too much of it until a strange noise startled him. I am kind of jolted out of bed. I hear rummaging around up above me, which I know is the attic. And so I'm like, that's kind of weird. Davis noticed the light was on in this office, so he knocked on the door, but no response. <laughs> he knocked again, then heard a woman's voice. Jimmy, is that you, Jimmy? And I'm like, no, it's not Jimmy. Uh, who is this and why are you in my house? Davis oh my immediately called 911. Then a woman, a complete stranger, opened the door and was face to face with him. Oh I'm like, God. who the heck are you? <laughs> what are, wh why are you in my house? And she keeps kind of going, this is my house. I live here. I've been here for three days. Oh my God. Jimmy said I could live here. Jamie said I could, Jimmy said I could stay here. Davis tried to keep the woman inside the house until police arrived, but she got away. He's puzzled as to how the woman even got in. Nothing appeared stolen, just a few things out of place. This fire escape ladder the was hell? hanging from the deck and a screen from the bathroom window was in the tub. It's just weird, you know. Davis says the woman living in the attic had dark hair and wore gym pants with a black jacket and white hood. <laughs> she also had a white knit cap and carried a backpack. Okay. Meanwhile, the family is now changing the locks and taking extra Probably precautions. Good idea. For Davis, it's hard to believe someone was staying here without anyone noticing. To come into a house like this in this neighborhood that's clearly being lived in, that's bold. <laughs> Yeah, you it's think bold. It's bold, what you guys. In the world. Yeah, there was a lady living in his attic for three days. Just just living. <laughs> well, Jimmy there. said it was fine. So Jimmy, yeah. So apparently she was also meant there's just like a lot of mentally ill people running around. You may want to check your attics. Yeah. Yeah. It's I like Harley Cat's like, who gives a crap what she was wearing? <laughs> I love that. That was part of the story too, Harley Cat. No, and, like, and the problem with the whole ra the the whole like um site the 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 source is that there's no follow-up like no. it doesn't say what did what ended up happening to the woman where is she now like I don't what think they know why did this happen i don't think anybody knows where the woman is she's just gone she just got a free place to stay for three days so yeah you may just want to check you just may and claudia check is absolutely right we need the mental institutions right back. that yeah. is what we need uh-huh I, I heard that wasn't it i think it was our producer who was talking to us about that how um how Geraldo is the one who is single-handedly responsible for making those go away. Remember he did a big expose That's on right. those in the eighties. Which and needed was, to be done. I mean, let's be fair. Okay, like, fine. It, needed to, it needed to be done, but then we like went overboard right. because they did away with them entirely. Remember you guys that, that expose he did on mental institutions in the eighties. And then it brought light. It brought attention to the fact that people were being mistreated in some of the mental institutions. And so they just, of course the government was like, well, let's just get rid of them entirely. <laughs> Let's That's just get rid of all of them. And so now <laughs> mentally ill people are just roaming the streets. And so, <laughs> you know, rather than like fix the problem, they got rid of them. Yeah. And so now look at where we are. It's <sighs> we need them back bad. Yeah, we like, do. We really, really need. Yeah, we do. We need a place. Mm -hmm. um, I only have adorable dogs today because thank I, God. Well, actually, I take that back. I also have one. Uh, post wisdom teeth removal hilarious video. Oh, good! I'll I love save those. that for the end. <laughs> I love that. I've, I've seen it before. It's pretty old because I know I've seen it before, but it came up in my feed yesterday. And I was like, "That's a perfect way to end today's show." Dogs and anesthesia, right? There's nothing better. So it is time for my pillow talks. Get your 85 percent discount on my pillow slippers and moccasins while supplies last mypillow.com slash chicks. chicks get them yeah I'm and, all, and also ordering like five pairs just so should. i always always have them on hand you should totally do that and then also go to our website at chicks on the right dot com wow look at us do that like, i know right we should go on we should go on the road like the sweeney sisters do a little single <laughs> single double <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's do some dogs and then we'll cap it off with the with the wisdom tooth sufferer. <laughs> okay. Oh no. Oh, no. Awesome. Oh my God. He's so fat too. I love how fat he is. He's fat. He's fat and he screams. <laughs> that dog was like, Hello! I need a fat screaming dog. 
All right. These poor, I think they're pit bulls. Um, they are not good at jumping. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my god, that, that's gonna leave a mark. That is not good. <laughs> so bad at jumping. Um, okay, also, <laughs> it is, I don't know, sometimes there's something about like completely closed off privacy fences that are just mean if you have a dog, right? And so, yeah, it's true. This, this little guy though has figured out how to see what's going on. Hi, <laughs> hi, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> and based on the size of his head you know that he's got to be jumping so high i know he is not very big god bless him <laughs> um okay check out this i love this one <laughs> oh my god she's like come here and he's like okay <laughs> he's like i will get right on your shoulder <laughs> Um, this is what happens when this person calls their dog's name out of a dead sleep. Last dog. Somebody needs to tell me what this dog is, what kind of breed, because I love it. It's so, so cute. Look at this. What is this? So this email says, do you want to like go in it's the office on Tuesday or Wednesday? There will be lots of treats <laughs> there. Hopefully we can have <laughs> breakfast and dinner at the office because breakfast and dinner oh will God, be available if we go there. <laughs> <laughs> you are so cute. I want that dog. Looks, I love him. It looks like just a mix. Really? Yeah. It looks like okay. like a Roddy, like Basenji kind of mix. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. It's a mix. All right. Are you going to love me? Come here. No, don't do it yet. It's too early. I know. He's, I'm just like I'm loving him. He's don't just, let him go, his, though. Because his he head on my lap. I know. The <laughs> We're waiting for the flappularity, bud. <laughs> Okay. okay, one more. This is the okay. wisdom tooth. Uh, the chick that just got her wisdom tooth out. I love these videos when it's just post anesthesia. And oh my god, off. I know. Oh my god, this one is epic. Here we go. Well, you just had surgery. So no, much. look. If you do that, it makes your face white. Yeah. Just to focus <laughs> it. And then Sadie showed me if you touch on the sun, you can move it and make it darker or lighter. Um, smart. She thought I was stupid because I didn't know how to do that, but now I know how to, so I'm not stupid anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm a little bit. No. Do you think I'm stupid? You're not now? stupid at all, sweetheart. No. It's I'm okay. moving. I'm going to college. <laughs> I went. I went. It was a prank, though. I pranked you guys to go to college, and I actually am not going to do it. Really? I hate it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so stupid. Stupid. It's so stupid. I think that education is dumb. I think that I can learn everything I need to know on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they told me how to clean out my washer and my dryer on TikTok. Really? And the school didn't teach me how to do that. No, school doesn't teach you that. No. I love the mom. The mom is like, no, honey, no. School didn't teach you how to do that. Like oh she's just god. being really calm. She's like, oh my god, you are messed up. I love You're that she like so... went from crying to just like I mean all the emotions were accounted for. Anesthesia is the best, the <laughs> best. Are you gonna come oh here god. and give me? Flat? All right, let's do some bringing in. Come here, let's bring. Come here. I need your head. I need. Come here. Get it. I, just grab here. it. Get I him. I need your head over here. Give me flat. There we go. <laughs> okay. Oh god, he got it in my ear. Oh my god. Oh, you guys look. Look at that. Oh my god. That's disgusting. That's so gross. Why? I just Ew. need you guys need to experience that oh with me. God. That's gross. That was in your ear. Mm -hmm. oh I know. That god. was like that was right there. That's it's <laughs> that's hair gel is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, gross, wild. right? It's disgusting. You're welcome, everybody. I'm sorry, I didn't bring it in. I didn't bring yeah, it you in. Gotta bring it in. I'll I gotta quickly it bring it in. You guys, we really need to bring it in today. It's been one of those days. <laughs> I know everybody's like gross. That's what happens when you have great Janes. They have so much stuff right there, yeah. right there. It's all that like it's just not... it's trapped here. It's not here <laughs> or here, but it's here. 
It's right. just in their jolly jowls. Mm -hmm. You guys Labs don't I, have that. At least mine don't. Mine don't. No, no, they don't. Okay, we're gonna try really hard to have a good day, everybody. Okay, you guys should too. We're gonna try to have a great day, and um, we will talk to you guys tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Mm -hmm.